to take into account was the work that came before us. So I, I said to myself, you know, um, I don't see anyone talking about um, the things that's necessary uh, to get our folks on our, on our feet. Um, Dr. Amos Wilson, uh, his book on economic power was a strong influence, like Dr. Ben was on me, and like Dr. Clark was on me, Dr. Shashi McIntyre was on me, Dr. Scobie's, you know, Dr. Scobie rather, and so many others, Chancellor Williams, Chicken the Diop, Dr. Lynn Jeffries. Were it not for Dr. Jeffries, I would have never been reading the books from Chicken the Diop, to be honest. Um, Dr. J was doing a lecture, um, and he said that he's a diopen. And from there, I bought every book I could find from Sheikh Adedia. And that's why we're so heavily influenced uh, in our imperial government structure uh, from Sheikh Adedia's work, uh, pre colonial Black Africa, to be precise. When I wrote our Constitution, what I, what I took into account was I'm not going to do what our folks did before. I'm going to look at the things we did back in the day. What we did right, we did wrong. And we're going to fix those issues and not repeat the same mistakes. That was my primary thought process. Second to that was studying what uh, Marcus Mazari Garvey did. He wanted to get back to sea as a folk. And it was a great move. He had some things missing. He had the right idea. And we had a hundred Earth years to figure out where did he go right and where did he go wrong? So my study was instant upon where he failed to make sure we don't do that. And so we have skewed heavily towards getting back to sea. It's a very expensive endeavor. Take uh, all of the journey travel and transport operations to get back to sea out of the fiscal budget law, all the ICFs, uh, actions out of the budget law to enforce what joint travel and transport puts in place to get us back to sea. And you would see a dramatic decrease in the size of our annual fiscal budget laws. Primarily, our fiscal budget laws major expenses come down to home construction, septic tanks, <laughs> and air, ground, and water fleets. That's where all the funds go. We had a hundred years now to figure out what the Honorable Marcus Mazzari Garvey did right and what he did wrong regarding getting back to sea. He didn't have a handle on port logistics or sea logistics, had to provision the ship. He couldn't build a ship or refit one and put it to sea. He couldn't even build one from scratch. We have all the technical know how to do all of that now within our possession. And for the past 17 Earth months, I am grateful that we've been participating in the Imperial Merchant Marines training for the MX-1 Empire. Now, we don't have a vessel in the water. You can't wait till you get a vessel in the water to start training on how to get to sea, though. You do that now, which is what we're doing. Because when we hit the ground running, as they say, or get to sea, safety is no accident. And doing things in a manner that will allow us to be at sea in an enduring manner in terms of being a sea power. I don't care if you only have one vessel. One vessel makes you a sea power if you can traverse the high seas on your own accord. And that's where we're going as fast as I can get us there. Because the Mexican Empire Global Common Market is in a good position. It'll be in a great position when we have our own deep water fleets. The vessels won't be big when we first get started, and they don't have to be. 60 footers and larger is where we shall begin. We'll crawl, and then we're going to walk. And then we're going to run.